Uh, hi everyone, thank you for staying at this hour. I know it's a bit hard uh, after a long day. And I hope this presentation will keep you up, uh, but not up at night. Uh, it's very great to talk about the dark web and what we can find there. So, uh, my name is Yael, I'm the head of customer success uh, at NetOn. Uh, we provide fraud detection and fraud prevention tools uh, for various of businesses uh, online. Uh, and what we are doing is that we are using a more legacy approach, uh, like velocity rules, and we add to that our machine learning models, which is our uh, main part in the fraud detection. Uh, and we also have a team of experts, our fraud intelligence team, that are searching through uh, the dark web. And with the knowledge that we're getting from there, with all the information, we feed our models uh, to detect better the behavior of fraudsters online. So let's dive deep. So, First, let's start with what is exactly the dark web. So the web, as we know it, contains three main parts. The first one is the clear web. This is the indexed web pages that uh, all the search engine can uh, view and upload when we're doing the search. Um, so this is actually only 4% of the web. Uh, although every time we're doing search, uh, using Google search, Google search, uh, we're getting dozens, hundreds, thousands of results, it's only 4%. Most of the web, 90% of the web, is the deep web. Those pages are not indexed and can't be uh, just entered by searching for them in Google. And it's actually a good thing, mostly, uh, because this is done for privacy reasons. So those pages will be mostly be able to enter using credentials. So if I did a blood test and I want to see my results, I need to get my username and my password to see those. So it's good that it's not uh, published online to everyone, uh, but only for me. Uh, so this is the deep web and 6% of the web is the darkest point, which is the dark web. And it is very dark place. Um, so what is going on in the dark web? Well, everything that you've heard and more, illegal content, uh, malware, all kinds of honeypots, criminals trying to scam other criminals because most of the people in the dark web are criminals, uh, and all kinds of false information. There's actually also very little, but there is also good actions going on in the dark web because a lot of people use it uh, anonymously. This is how you're supposed to use it, and we will talk about it in a second. Uh, so this is a place where people can speak freely uh, and take actions and initiate actions uh, to, for the free world, uh, where they're from countries where it's uh, not allowed to go and protest outside. This is the place where they can use that. So let's dive. Hmm, maybe not so fast. One second. We said that it's a very dark place. Let's get the right equipment. So what you need to do when you're going into the dark web is not being yourself. You need to mask yourself and do it really, really well. You don't want your real personal data to be there. Uh, so what you need to do is first not using your operating system, use VPN service, uh, you should not download anything. I know it looks like the best gift ever. Don't download it. You don't know uh, what will be behind it. Don't use your personal data. Don't use your company email. It may become a very uncomfortable situation uh, with your uh, employer. Uh, think three times before you click on any link that you find there. Don't trust what you find there. And use network analyzation such as a uh, Tor. So 
in general mode, find someone who's expert in that and use his computer to do it. Uh, what can happen if you will expose your personal data uh, on the dark web? So criminals will be able to blackmail you. Uh, they can sell this information in the dark web. Uh, they can impersonate, uh, use it to impersonate you uh, doing fraud. Uh, somebody can actually think it's really funny to prank you and send to the police screenshots of your personal data from the dark web and then you will get not so funny uh, call from the police saying, what did you do on the dark web? And also because it's a place where a lot of criminals are staying, there will be law enforcement there looking for those criminals that are not um, masking their personal data. Uh, they were looking for those, they will look for any kind of illegal events uh, happening. So you don't want those also to know that you are there. So now we are ready to jump into the deep dark water. Let's go. So today we're going to focus uh, on the things that are for sale on the dark web. Uh, and it's very exciting, right? We are doing today diving, which is very extreme uh, in the dark web, extreme again, also selling, who doesn't love good shopping? So what's on sale? Your data. Not so nice now. Okay, so uh, I'm bringing you today uh, two recent examples from our fraud intelligence team and their findings. The first one uh, is a case study of uh, Spotify. So, what are two found in Spotify uh, are accounts for sale for Spotify range, and you can see very well, from three to twenty-four dollars less than parking in Tel Aviv, really good catch. And there are actually the more expensive ones are the one with guarantee. If it doesn't work, you will get a new one. And you can also get free upgrades for Spotify. Until now, it doesn't sound really bad, right? And uh, you can also buy followers and plays. So what is the use case here for the fraudster? The fraudster will take all of this will take over an existing account or create a new one. Uh, it doesn't really matter for them. They will upload this really lousy song. It doesn't even have to be a song. Uh, it's just something that will sound, uh, that will be a song, uh, sounds like a song, sorry, uh, to Spotify. And then they will have the followers and plays added to that. So it's actually a scam against Spotify because at that moment, this song will be ranked higher and now Spotify will pay uh, to those. Uh, the sponsor will get the money and go. That's it. This is how you can scam Spotify. Again, don't use it. Um, so how do we in Nikon when we're doing fraud prevention, what do we do with those findings? So the next case is for one of our customers, which is a merchant in the travel industry. So our team again found this really nice advertising, since very nice accounts for sale. It's also on sale on Telegram, which is the best friend uh, for the dark web. Even positive reviews, but remember, don't trust what you find on the dark web. And don't also rely on best reviews uh, on the peer web. Also there, it might be reduced bought from the dark web. And what is the information for sale? So the information for sale here is not the account for, uh, for this, specific, this specific merchant, but actually it's the account, uh, the email of the customers. So what do they do with those emails? They're going into this merchant website doing, I forgot my password, please recover it. They're getting into the email uh, of the customer, of this user. They recover the customer, put their own uh, password. And from the perspective of the merchant, it's a legit way. Everything is okay. At this moment, this fraudster now can do whatever he wants on this uh, website. 
Adding to that, that for this old sale, uh, it was a really good catch. You can get other services as well, uh, such as clean your cookies, use a VPN to fake your IP, money transfer account, temporary uh, email address, and you get the whole deal. So what we are doing with that is that our uh, customers, which are the merchants or the service providers or banks, they're sending to us through API all the events such as login, sign up, transaction, and we are taking all this information as long with the behaviors that we find. We can detect the VPN or the proxy so we can know when it's fake. And all the information that we're looking in the dark web, we're putting into our machine learning models. We feed them with that and then they know how to detect fraud. And in real time, we can tell our customers if this action was done by a legit customer or by a fake one. So, thank you very much. I hope it was very insightful for you.